so this can't be good. <laughs> I uploaded a, uh, a .ino file that I made from um, an Arduino IDE and the screen just got wonky and we just kept like I couldn't get it into the boot mode and then this happened. So I got lucky. I was able to click uh, the different boot and reset buttons and I got it into a mode where it, this, everything just went black. However, it had power to the uh, ESP32. And then I went to Adafruit, has this, this really cool site. So I couldn't mount the drive. Well, I guess I could, but it was mounting it in a kind of strange way. But so I went to this adafruit.github.io slash adafruit underscore web serial underscore ESP tool. And then I clicked up here, connect, and it connected to it. It gave me a list of um, COM ports. I selected uh, the COM port for this. And then I just said erase. And it has blown away uh, flash memory. I mean, look at this down here. Here it is. It's erasing flash memory. So hopefully, hopefully that's good. And then maybe I can drop um, CircuitPython on there again. That's why I kind of started all this was so I could drop CircuitPython on there so I could drop a file in the file system. And then I could drop a UF2 that I built in uh, the Arduino um, IDE on top of that so it can access that file system. So fingers crossed. So here we have the Adafruit ESP tool and there's actually a second part before I show I showed the erasing the flash memory as you see on the screen but note that there's this choose a file. This is kind of part two which I sort of didn't realize of course. So you have to choose the file and when you click that it will bring up your you know like a find that file sort of thing. Um, on Adafruit site there are these um, uh, bundles you can download. So uh, Tiniest UF2 release for all boards is what I grabbed. I happen to be just on the mag tag page. But you grab that and it'll pull down a zip file. You open that up. There's a UF2 in there, but you can't actually load the UF2. What you want to do is load this file, combined.bin. And when you load that, it um, reset the board and I was able to access it. Hooray! So it did work. Um, I still had to do some more fiddling after that, but I got it going. So I'm pretty psyched about that. So um, yeah, let me show you a little bit more of that. So the third and final step is to do a, f is to drop a factory reset UF2 file, which you can find here on the Adafruit site. Um, I'll put links to all these in the description. I wonder if any of this would work on other ESP boards. Probably not, but um, maybe. Maybe you could you know, connect it to that web tool and at least erase it, which is kind of slick because um, I was kind of dead in the water. I tried different sequences, and to get into these sequences, you do have to hold like the reset button or hold the boot button and then hit the reset button and it gets it into this funky kind of state that you could at least I could at least connect to it uh, via that web tool. But yeah, you just download this UF2, drag and drop it on like it says here it'll mount this particular device as the Feather uh, what is that Feather S2 boot. Um, and then it brought it back up to this sort of state. It looked like this when I first brought it up. Um, I had to uh, kind of, you know, double click the um, reset button on it in order to get it into the bootloader mode. So it still required a little, a little fiddling, but not a lot. And now I'm able to load code. Um, however, it actually did lock up on me again, so I had to repeat this process. And now it's working again. So. I wonder if I need to f update some firmware somewhere else on the on the device or if the device is kind of going going gone. I don't know. I don't know. But um I want to show you one other cool little site someone sent me uh and I don't think it supports this particular um device but it supports a ton of ESP32 devices. You got to check this out. So this link was sent to me by um someone named Altitude on YouTube. Uh, he has a great channel, or they have a great channel, and I will put a, a link to their channel in the description. Uh, really cool stuff they're doing with the SP32s, uh, but this site called Canair.io, 
And um, if we jump down to the web installer, <clears throat> basically, <laughs> it's really cool. Like you can um, uh, download some firmware here, some code. Um, oh, before it was showing is a link here. I'm not sure what I, maybe I'm using, probably have to use Chrome maybe to go to the site. That happens a lot. You have to use Chrome also to do the um, Adafruit site for that web installer as well. So right now I think I'm on Safari. But um, basically you can download for generic ESP32 or dev kit, whatever. And then down here they have the M5 stick. And um, there's a video. It's pretty nuts. You, you basically download the firmware and it brings it up into this mode. Uh, you can plug in sensors, it auto detects them, and then feeds it up to, you can, you can then feed it up to, uh, I think it's maybe Azure, I forget what cloud it is, one of the cloud providers, and then there's a phone app, and pretty quick, you can have something up and running if you want. Um, might be worth checking out this video, I watched it, I, I thought it was pretty cool. I, uh, I mean, I may be able to try the generic on mine. Couldn't hurt, well... Yeah, can't hurt. Now we know how to reset it, so we're all set. <laughs> but yeah, check it out. See, it's showing some, uh, you know, you can hook up a CO2 scanner or whatever you're interested in. So definitely check it. Check this out. Pretty slick.